Hello and welcome back to Deadfire. We are in Pokokahara and we are pretty deep. We have a key for uh, this room over here, which I've actually just noticed is an individual. Sorry, this room up here. Okay, but we can also head around this way. So we got multiple routes to where we want to go. I'll take I'm just going to head around this way. I'm not scared of fighting things, but, you know, we'll see. Uh, so that's a way up to a room. Okay, so that's. So this is probably a shortcut that we've got here. We might have stopped the last episode right before we went into the final room, which would be typical. There should be another fight here, I'd imagine, looking at the, the space that we got. Either that I or should. traps. Another fight. Okay. Predator Killed the Oh, wow. That's a lot of defenders. All, and done. that one we can unlock with the old copper key. Right. Pack that one. What are these guys weak to? Oh. Doesn't really say too much. Uh, let's Nothing use our lightning. Worth and rough. Uh, I do want to use our brand new dagger. Let's uh, think back there at that arc. That looks like it hurt. Ha! Uh, we're about to get destroyed. Oh, the stun works. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Nice. Get behind him. Damn him in the back. Show how it's done. Nice. Okay, that works. Uh, we need to drop a heal over there probably as well. That's okay. Moe Our lightning going over everything is pretty good. Bullseye. Nice, the heal's good. Risen Mage shouldn't get another hit off. Yeah, we're okay. And that's the end of them. We got a level up. Nice, who leveled up? Halogena leveled up. She must have been quite a bit off. Oh, no. Ate these sigils that give you these uh, awful negatives. I don't really want to rest again because we just rested. Hmm. Okay, this one doesn't seem as bad as the one that just lowers your might. Let's uh, kill it anyway, though. Yeah. There's something you don't see every day. Oh, we're immune. Be right there. Oh, okay. Uh, what's your weapon do? Uh, the weapon does. The two damage types it resists. Okay. Uh, how do we kill it then? You know what we could do? We could use something like that. Worth and <laughs> That'll do it. Go yeah. on, Captain. Just crush it. Uh, so that's what Next our key time, opens. a challenge. Interesting. We got level of Pelagina. Let's do that. Uh, intimidate seems good. And athletics. We're going to level eight on everything. I think that's our next kind of point. And then this one, she gets two abilities, so she can get one of these. This one gives a stead, uh, gives a resolute, and this one gives quick inspiration. Okay, we don't necessarily need to do that right now. What's this? Hastening exhortation. So, commands an ally to get quick. Quick is dexterity. Okay. Proved critical is nice. So she doesn't crit that much. Gains zeal each time she downs an enemy. If we had more abilities I wanted to use that had zeal, maybe. Yeah. I don't know. Let's see. He doesn't really have anything I'm super excited about. I don't know. Nothing really jumps out at me as something I need. Damage taken is great. Let's well, 40% extra damage taking. Taken. That's pretty good. Yeah, let's get the um, let's get the ally uh, going quicker one. Let's get them dexterity. Let's we'll see what we can do there. All right. So a quick save. Oh, we should Speak at least have mind. our whole party together if we're walking around. Then we've got this, which our mechanic skill was too uh, weak to get through. Yeah. Get and then, oh, it's done. That's a lot of Adra. That's a Menpegra. It's weak to ice. Okay. We should throw down our blizzards immediately. Uh, and also make it our main target for Bulwar. Okay, that's good. Blizzard doesn't appear to be hurting it too much. Uh, uh, I think I will need to heal as well. This fight. So let's moon well. Get everyone standing in our spot. Oh! Our brilliant uh, Archibus user is not using an Archibus. Okay. Head around this side. Right. Uh, Palagina needs to heal. 
yeah, let's just give her a greater lay on hands to herself. Seems good. It's weird that she has lay on hands and greater lay on hands. Right, uh, athletics. We wanna hit it with... I don't know. What I might do is actually switch to this. Teleport behind it and then that gives us a stun on it. Uh, Hunter's Market. And... I don't know, let's lightning and hit everything with lightning. Let's try and stun things. Huh. That'll be quite Might useful. Well be Especially the as they're trying to don't see every day. We didn't actually hit it with our thing that would be good there. Okay, take a step I'll back. Take, take a step back. They're both in uh, AoEs. Uh, and we should be able to just kill it. <laughs> Not quite. The stun was pretty good, though. Right. Down. Take a step back, switch to our bow. What have we got? We have some that we can possibly get here. Let's use our uh, kill move on that one. This one, got, this one got marked for the hunt. Okay. Uh, and then to prepare who? Boiling spray them. Knock them back. Oh, thick work. Ha, still got it. <laughs> Oh, Takehu. Oh, that, that, that she's still in the, uh, I th guess he was still in the Vile Thorns, technically. Or the Wicked Brayers. Yeah, okay. We are losing allies. Yeah, we lost it the no well. use. I cannot get We're going to have to rest again. Yeah. And the Adra Ooze, very easy to take yeah. down. Hopefully. Uh. Bullseye. I would, because it's weak to crushing, I would use Takehu, but uh, he's no longer with us for a second, so yeah. that's fine gonna split I think huh. no it didn't split okay. captain watch grab the loot can do interesting it's basically a tougher fight at that side the etchings on the sarcophagus have been worn down past legibility uh, we need to rest unfortunately because we also have the resolve affliction and if there's a boss fight I see coming, where you're going with that we need to actually be able to do it Grab all that stuff. A little quick save. Are we still bloodied? We need to rest twice. Yeah, okay. We'll rest again. Wait, he's still bloodied? Why can I not? Oh, is it because I don't I don't have any cuttlefish and he needs something to uh, heal? Okay. Well, let's give him that one. Yeah, okay. Speak you freely. need to actually use something to heal. Or to rest. I shouldn't have wasted all the other stuff, but that's fine. Be cautious. Then. Be constant. Anyway. Let's head in here. Um Okay. That looks like it's gonna come to life. Uh Oh! The torch in the shadows is dead there. Um that's from Zankorus. You can barely make out the words upon the sarcophagus. Here rests that head that bore a crown of devotion. Okay. They're facing luminous uh, revenant who are resistant to uh, ice. Okay. Um, let's see. I think I just want you to run in at that one. Uh, how is our dagger looking? I want to see whether we can upgrade it in this fight. Probably not. But I'll stick back just a second or two. Uh, Show we'll them how that it's one. done. You attack this one. Looks like some haven't spawned yet. Kind of holding off and going all in. And you can hunter's mark this one. Right between the no, eyes. They all spawned. Oh, he hasn't spawned yet. Ah! Yeah. Chorus. Okay, weak to crushing. Well, we have the perfect answer to that. But actually, oh, first of all, I'm going to walk forward and use lightning for the stun. It'll hopefully work. <laughs> What's that on the ground? Oh. It is. Well, we need to find somebody who's in it. Uh. Don't know what that is on the ground. Don't like it, though. That must hurt. That's a lot of damage. Okay, yeah. Uh, what's this one? 
rolling cloud of healing, which is quite nice. Or we could just go for high damage, which I think might work better. Okay. He's marked for the hunt, so we'll shoot that one. And we'll also I'll shoot the Luminous Revenant back there. Rough. You see that, Ishii? Nice. Huh. The stun actually hit it, which is what I was looking for. Uh, Ishii can try and knock it over. We'll get Eddier to try and knock him over. We might get Eddier to use Soul Strike. Hmm. Yeah, try and lower his defenses. Palagina, definitely going to use Sworn Enemy. Oh, might as well be hitting the water. Right, and then she'll use the Wrath of the that Five. That looks like it hurt. Five ah! Yeah. Okay, good. That's a lot of damage down on it so far. Still weak to crushing. We don't have any more crushing here, I don't think. We still have Eddier's crushing, actually. We'll keep that going. Uh, try and get a bleed going. And try and get multiple bleeds going. Uh, we do have rolling wave, but that is going to hurt ours. We could summon the Andra tentacle. Or we could just uh, drop down a moonwell. Yeah. Just drop down a moonwell. And that's the sun how it's seems done. to be doing pretty well. I think yeah. I made the right choice, although we have killed it. Show which is very, it's... very good. That's amazing. Uh, it doesn't have another lightning, unfortunately. It's kind of a great opportunity for another lightning, but okay. Uh, yeah, we use our ice. It still has more damage, which is very, very good. Okay. Allergena needs to heal, so we use athletics. Can't get a clean hit. She can. Yeah. And she can turn around. I am the alpha predator. Nice. Okay. We got here. This one's weak to fire. It's almost worth Palagina just shooting the fire pit. Never mind. They're both dead. <coughs> we have absolutely annihilated this place. Awakened Adra, Black Pearl, Vessel Bones, like within shield. Okay. Oh, that was just way too easy. And that's here lies the person who was, had the crown of devotion. I don't suppose we get. I don't think we'll get a marker for that guy as one of these. Would it be a vessel, I guess? Uh, I don't see him there. I don't think you get unique people in this one. Hmm. Okay. We didn't really fight him. We just stunned him until he died. So. Yeah. Of course. That's fine. What are we missing? Oh, we're missing that room over here. Yeah, of course. There's still one room we haven't been in. Okay. That was an interesting fight. We still kind of destroyed it. But we do also have our best party by far. Or, well, I mean, a loth probably makes it better. But I'm actually really liking Takehu now. Alagina almost seems weak, actually. I mean, she's really strong in terms of survival. But, like, weak in terms of... What else she brings to the party? She kind of brings a like she brings a lot of like tankiness and ability to do one like to hit one person, but not much else. Huh. Is there some lightning thing going along here? Well, let's not go that way then. Oh, we got this. Oh, never mind. Nothing. This is the way we have to go. Well, let's confirm something first. Palagina, I see Edir. Good thinking. I could go for some shut eye about now. Okay. That instantly just applied bloody to him or system shot. Wow. Okay. Well, that's not good. Oh, that's an Edir there. I don't want Edir to walk in. I want us to walk in. See whether there's a way of turning it off. Okay, yeah. What are we aiming to do here? These are essence batteries. Yeah. Bullseye. I do anything if I destroy them all? If I destroy them, it appears to turn off the uh, lightning. It seems good. Yeah. Yeah. 
There's and a that's library. how it's done. Right hey, everybody. Here. Let's walk in here. The essence batteries are destroyed. Ooh. Not a library. Just a room. Okay, what's going on here? A woman lies dead on the tiles. Her skin discolored with decay. Her rent flesh sloughs away to reveal bone. No maggots or bugs have reached her here, which only means that there is more of her left to assault your nostrils. A sword lies discarded beside her. Pack lies beneath her arm, and the barest wisp of essence hovers over her body. Let's examine her body first. The woman's body lies at the end of a tail of smeared, crusted blood. The damage to her armor suggests a fight, though it looks like her attacker or attacker has allowed her to crawl away to die. Holding your breath, you kneel to search the body. As you handle her remains, clumps of muscle and flesh fall off, right, raising a fresh wave of rot. Most of her belongings are slimy and rancid with, put uh, with putrescence, but her pack has escaped the worst of it. Inside you see a few torn pages and a carved figurine. Let's just read her soul. Brief images you see are scattered and confused. You're an explorer with the Valian Training Company, and you're searching the ruins with your comrades. At least they used to be your comrades. Now you're not so sure. Things might have been going wrong ever since, uh, ever since you got to this island. Things have been going on ever since you got to this island. First with Gian, then with Olara. Though it might have started earlier on Tikawara. Maybe when Vector fell sick. You hear a scream in the distance. You don't know where the others are. You don't know why there's blood on your hands. You don't know why it's so hard to think. But you remember that you were supposed to be quiet and avoid the notice of whatever is down here. Something moves in the darkness. Alright, let's have a look at the pages. It looked like they were ripped from a book or a journal. They're brown and warped with spilled drink and scrawled with a few brief entries. Beza's pages. These pages have been torn out of a larger book. They are stained brown and stiff with some dark, fragrant liquid. The entries begin thus. I wanted so bad to find Pukakahara. Now we are stuck here. No one dares leave while the Titan roams outside, so we must hope we can find another exit somewhere in these ruins. Ola must have triggered it. Did not move until she began prying open the door. Before we knew it, it had Gian. Do not know what I, the others do not say it, but I know they blame me for failing to save him. Munches of dirt from the author's hand streaked the page around the next entry. Ola is gone too. We must move more slowly now, wary of traps and monsters. I detest this creeping about, and Diano's stomping nearly makes this all impossible. But Falero has almost lost his nerve. I do not think he can take another nasty surprise. The next entry is filled with big crooked letters that loop and swoop like a child's. The others sleep. We decided against candles or campfires, so I write in the glow of the Adva. It is good, because I hear something moving in the dark, even the others do not. Falero insists that we move uh, more slowly. Valero insisted that we move slowly so he could study the murals and the patterns on the floor. He thinks to save us from mishaps like the one that befell Bikian and Olara. But none of that will help if the hate creatures catch us here. Dueno hides a limp, but the way he looks at Valero and me makes me think he is hiding something else, too. They grow more and more paranoid with every hour in this place. When they awaken, we will press forward, so that we may be done with. In the meantime, I will keep the pages with my own observations. I cannot trust the others with. The next entry is hastily scribbled. Valero lost the logbook and accuses me of sabotage. Sabotage! He is so busy sketching his murals he forgets why we are here. But I saw the ad and I understand. This place is sick. We are here to cure it. But Valero says the Huana were here long ago and the murals prove as much. I think one of Mawel looks much like another. But he gave me an idea. Right now we spend blood and treasure searching for luminous Adva. Our task would be much easier if we could make regular Adva luminous by enriching it with live souls. As I look at the equipment the Agwithans built here, so like the machines our animancers construct. Wonder if they once did this very thing. So we have the villages of Tikawara so eager to help? When we return to Nekataka, I will present my idea to Luvea Alavari. I do not think Director Castole has the stomach for it, nor my companions, I fear. Interesting. 
figurine. The wooden figurine has the body of a woman and the head of a fish with beady eyes and gaping snaggle toothed maw. It's pale and rough textured, like it was carved recently. So she carved Ingati recently. Maybe Ingati slash Andra is messing with her head? Can't discern anything remarkable about it, but you feel a sudden sharp headache. Her weapon? The saber boasts a viciously serrated edge. Despite the state of its former owner, the blade appears to be in good condition and you retrieve it. Beza's tooth blade. Okay. Interesting. So it lowers armor rating on a critical hit. Yeah, it's alright. Not amazing. It's alright. Right here. I got then this. We have whatever this is. The Arokian calendar? Anna Arokio, the new year. While only 150 years old and of Valian origin as well, the Arokian calendar is currently used throughout most of the Deerwood and the surrounding areas. While the Deerwood was using the Adirian calendar until recently, they gave up in favour of the Arokian calendar. The transition was easy to get people to make because the Adirian calendar was hopelessly inaccurate. Erokio uh, calculated that it takes the planet approximately 334 days to orbit the sun. So you took the 9 months from the Adirian calendar and broke them into 16 months of 20 days each, with each season consisting of 4 months. The length of each month corresponds to how long it takes Belafa, one of our moons, to circle the planet. At the end of each season, 3 days, not part of either season, are set aside for people to celebrate the transitions. Lastly, the final 2 days of the year, the new year in the mid-year are used to observe the beginning and midpoint of the year. To prevent any confusion for the transition from the old calendar to the new, Orochio kept the year the same. So although the calendar has only been in existence for 150 years, it is currently 2823 AI, Anna Orochio. Orochio gave the months Valian names, but in the Deerwood and surrounding areas they call them by their translated names. The, new, the year is broken down in the following ways. New Year. A day to celebrate the arrival of the new year. All of the holidays, this is one celebrated by the most people around the Deerwood and the Valian Republics. Each new year is greeted with a fervent zeal to begin things anew and start with a fresh slate. Winter Month. Two at the beginning of the year and two at the end. Deep Winter. Bonavero. Late Winter. Tar Tariverno. Spring Dawn. Three days. In Prima, used to celebrate the transition of the world, rebirth, and spring. Ethosian festivals are especially prevalent at this time, or were prior to the Saints' War. Spring months, early spring, Crypt Prima, mid spring, Ash Prima, deep spring, Bon Prima, late spring, Tar Prima. Summer rising, three days. In Etsu, a period of transition from birth to growth. Many ceremonies designed to usher children into adulthood take place during the summer rising. Summer months and mid-year. Early summer. Christu. Midsummer. Mashestu. Mid-year. A day of reflection and introspection. The year is half over. People who made promises on New Year use mid-year to assess their progress and renew their oaths. Deep summer. Bonestu. Late summer. Terestu. Autumn falling. Three days. Anna Autumn. Harvest set festivals happen during autumn falling if the crops were particularly bountiful. If the harvest was small, supplications given to the gods asking for better harvest the following year. Autumn months, early autumn, pre autumn, mid autumn, maj autumn, deep autumn, fon autumn, late autumn, tara autumn, winter month, uh, winter dusk, three days, inverno, I, 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 what's that? In, that's in, I, ver, no. Winter dusk is filled with celebrations of life, vigils for the dead. The world is returning to sleep, plants die, and those who still, and those still alive raise a toast to another year. Winter months, early winter. Pre, I, ver, no. Midwinter. Maj, I, ver, no. Interesting. I wonder if that has any relevance. Occasionally when you find a book this deep into a dungeon, there's usually a reason to know it. It doesn't seem like that's the case with this book. But anyway, what have we got down here? We've got this thing, which doesn't have anything lit on it. We've got half a mural. 
The Juana's sac uh, figure sacrifice appears to have supplied the pillar with energy depicted in blue flames. I right see here. they worship the Leave blue flames me. and they their souls are the blue flame. Got it. And we have the way to the Adra pillar. And the shaking. Good, good. Gotta have some shaking. Ready to go through the door. Okay, it's red. Not good. Ugh, the tentacle rots from the base up, I say. Energy pulses through the twisted column like a red, like an irregular heartbeat straining at the bounding walls. Okay. We've got something we can interact with there. I want to hold off till I know what all of our options are. I suspect our options are interact with it or don't. I can be quiet if you and can. Is this just a way up? That's just a way up. That's just our way out. Well, we want to cure the Luminous Adra. We do not want to sacrifice the people of Tikawara. The Valians are bad in this respect. We want to, if we cannot cure it, destroy it. As far as I've got there, that's, those are our options. Let's see. The machine at the base of the Adra pillar is in bad shape. The Adra panels are warped and the copper is corroded, but it looks whole. A high keating sound comes from the Adra. Let's examine the machine. You check the copper connections and knobs. Everything appears to be intact, but none of the essence in the pillar runs through it. The keening grows louder. Activate the machine. You turn the Adra wheel and adjust some sliders. At first, nothing happens. Then you feel a fluctuation in the ether. The wailing grows louder. A portal inside the Adra pillar? Essence moves within the pillar, opening a dimension as raw and distorted as a fresh wound. Something in that place pulls at your soul and the distant voices cry out again. Well, last time we did this, we ended up in Barath's realm. Let's see whose realm we end up in this time. I'm assuming Andra's? Dimension within the Adra is open, tugging at your soul. Let's go, project my party. This has got to be in Gatti slash Andra, right? From what we've heard. Also, it's severely corrupted. A force within the Adra tugs your soul from your body and into a realm of pure essence. You become aware of a fragmented dreamlike landscape. It's not a physical place, but rather a shape your mind is formed from the teeming energy. So is your presence in it. Gwe? What is this? Are we truly in this place? Your actual body is still in Pokokahara. You feel the cold tiles beneath it and smell the dusty air around it, but you cannot return to it. Something here has a hold on you. The voices you heard outside the pillar scream and wail somewhere close by. Be cautious. Okay. Be constant. So the sacrifices... Maybe... I don't know. Corrupt. Maybe the sacrifices corrupted the pillar? Oh. Okay. Hello, Juana. A lot of Juana. You reach the source of the t of the Tolmut, a festering mass of corruption. Hundreds of souls cry out within it, trapped and twisted by the accumulating decay. That is not a good way to go. A handful of souls, still fresh and mostly whole, surface to confront you. One of them separates out from the others and stares you down with a grim, hateful intensity. You do not belong here. The speaker takes the form of an older Huana man, his visage shifting as if reflected in rippling water. He is not a physical presence, but rather a soul-given shape. Who are you? We are the dead. His voice hits your mind like a clapper to a bell. Maybe you're dead. I do not see Tangaloa's mouth or Sirono's doors anywhere. Sirona. Uh, that's the Valian variant of Berath. Okay. That's Bessa. Oh. A second form takes shape near the first and glowers at him. Their essence sharpens and flicker at each other. My storm reads Pococahara. Ngati's fist drags Valian ships to the deep. If you come to stop this, you have already failed. I just realized is Anaharu. That's the uh, father of the priest in Tikawara. Oh, wow. And he's causing the storms because he doesn't want the Valians. 
His form gathers definition. Whether or not his words are true, he believes what he is saying. You come as an endorsement from your mother, I say. He nods at Takehu. As usual, I am the last to know. Hmm. You're responsible for the storms? How? Ngati holds our souls in this swamp, cut off from the sea. The flow of essence stops here. He gazes out at the shifting scenery beyond your floating platform of what only resembles stone. And rots, apparently. He wrinkles her nose at the putrefying mass and checks under her boots. The cistern overflows into the world of the living, stirring the sea and skies with the fury of the goddess. Bringing storms. His lips curve into a slight smile. Blinking, Maya clears her throat and eases in closer to listen. Hmm. So, the luminous adder is affecting the weather, or the souls inside it are? No souls travel through here. The Adra screams. Ngati grins, showing her fangs. Akira, then you do know my mother. This is where Valian's scheming ends. Ngati's servant holds the dam closed to flood the living world with her vengeance. He places a hand over the spot his heart once occupied. Hmm. Interesting. Pushing out the Valian, pushing out Valia, only as he changes a trading post for Rawatayan warships. Tempting. We can say, you sure that think they'll do anything to protect an investment? Or do you think destroying, let's try and appeal to him destroying Tikawara. I don't think we need to use any of the evidence. You think destroying this region will save Tikawara? One village? No. I do this for the archipelago. I am the storm of my people. Adra is the staff I wave to churn Ngati's kingdom. He opens his palms. The ether around you reacts at once, whipping up the ambient essence into a frenzy. Far away, you think you can hear furious winds growing in response. Madiko! To arrive at the far side of death and find this babbling brook. She, pres she presses her temples with both hands. The Valians will not overrun us while I have the strength to repel them. He furrows his brow towards Betsa. If you think bad weather will hold back my countrymen, you have greatly underestimated us. They will depart when the waters rise to drown their investments. This I know. Well... Let's bring up the Trial of the wa of Waves. Anaharu, you lost the Trial of Waves, and Gatti judged you unworthy. Ngati tested me, I say. The Trial of Waves was her trickster's way of sending me here. One of his eyes twitches. Pirates and slavers drove my tribe from our old roots and havens. Now, the Valians do the same with paper. They come to pull Adra from the earth and mill it like grain. You speak as though this Adra has been the heart and soul of your tribe for generations. Though you have only recently come here. Adra is the heart and health of the dead fire. You whose breast is cold and still would know nothing of this. There is nothing more to say. Here at the end, outsider lies are a dull edge. He glowers at you, the ambient essence growing sharp and turbulent around him. Hmm. We could try number... F I think number one is not quite there. I'm not quite at the stage of destroying it. Lying is not good. Attacking is not good. So we're between two and four. No more fighting, or you've all died. I'll try and help them move on. You've all died. Maybe I can help you move on. This is where all things stop. No one leaves, I say. He balls his hands into fists, his shoulders knotting with tension. Akosi, let's not be hasty. Some of us still have bodies out there. He puts up a hand in protest and glances to the souls of her crew. You don't plan on staying here, Ak? 
Why not let us tag along and see if we can reunite with our... what we left behind? She spreads her palms open in a show of benevolence. We can say that won't happen. Never ends well when you stuff mismatched essence into one body. They'll do it. Hmm. Let's use our metaphysics. It never ends well when you stuff mismatched essence into one body. You're not lying, are you? He glances back towards her crew and winces. You've all served your captain with distinction. But I think this is where we part ways. He nods to each of them in turn. This me. Oh, that's the end of that, I guess. She salutes her crew, many of whom vanish on the spot, their souls joining the ambient ether. Betsa nods to you and departs soon after, grimacing. Anaharu advances. Oh, I didn't know I was agreeing to anything there. Um, I, I didn't agree to anything? Okay, um, well, I guess our choice has been chosen. Stab them. Um, they seem to be weak to ice. Oh, they're just weak to everything. Okay. Oh, Definitely light. Yeah. Run forward at that one. Run forward at that one. Maya, um, Markham. And Eddier, uh, I'm gonna get you to leap at the back. <laughs> ah, that's gonna leap. Nice. Okay. That's good. Oh, wow. We have no Scar. health left now. <laughs> That stun's good. How do you like that? Um, smoke fell. <laughs> Immediately disappear. I need you to turn into a shark. Run forward there. Oh, we're dead. <laughs> okay. Even when he's a shark, it still does the lightning around him. That's <laughs> awesome. Okay. Attack this one. <laughs> the lightning shark is definitely my favorite strategy we can't so far. Afford to lose another. We lost the bird, in case you're wondering. Okay. I guess we helped the Valians here? Not really where I was going with that, but I guess we helped them. Be yours to command. Presumably we still have options. I don't know. We did it. You subdue the furious souls, ripping them into motes of their constituent essence. Beyond this cloud of essence, you feel the pull of the circle, a force that it steadily increases. This pillar remains steadfastly blocked from the natural flow. Power still hums through the essence. Sending it through the cycle would restore the Adra around you. Fragmenting it would detonate this, the delicate balance of power, destroying the pillar. Either way, the steady tug of the beyond grows. You must decide quickly. Obviously, it restore the natural flow of essence. You push the essence through the widening channel to the beyond. They churn and spin away. Suddenly, the ether around you develops into a churning maelstrom. You pull yourself back towards your body, or the force rips your soul away. Okay. Nothing to loot. Be yours to command, Time Captain. to head out. I guess we help the Valians all the way. You cling to the tether of your soul, racing to the safety of the material world, even as the immaterial one wraps around you. Essence floods the newly restored Adra, filling it with light and heat that is both agonizing and rapturous. You return to your body, feeling as though you've just fallen into it from a mountain top. Your companions gasp and groan beside you. You cover your face against the light radiating from the restored Adra. Okay. So I'm expecting Betsa to be over here next to her soul. Right? Uh... No, okay, so that's... Speak your mind. I'm very confused. I, I, I feel like I didn't understand the quest. And I still don't understand the quest. So, we have returned the Luminous Adra. So people are back in the cycle. I guess Betsa, we just returned to the cycle. Kind of got the imp impression she was going back to a body, but maybe I just returned her to the cycle, which is kind of... That fits. Everyone's just returned to the cycle. And then we lie to both groups and we tell them that... There's nothing here. I guess that's the plan. I don't know. It's a little bit like... 
I don't know. It's a little confusing as to what we just did there. But we did it. We definitely did it. That much you cannot deny. We did something. Okay. Uh, oh, leave this way. Definitely. So, I want to go to Tikawara if that's an option for us. Report my progress to either Atstura or Governor Alivari. Hmm. Interesting. No reason to go straight to Tikawara. So I guess we do want to head back to Nekataka. Yeah, let's do that this episode. I was thinking, do we want to? But if we're reporting to one person, sure. We'll head back there. That seems good. Where our destination is. I think we've explored the Tikawara Islands, but maybe there's an island like right there that we haven't explored. Yeah, I guess that must be where it is. People aren't as eager to attack us now that we switched our uh, our flag from uh, Principe. To be honest, was like, please attack me no matter who you are. Uh, let's head to the Valians, I guess. Uh, we even head to the Valians? I guess the Wild Mare and then we head outside. Well, Queen's Birth is pretty much there. Yeah, with a loading screen, it's probably as close. Head there. We then head through this area to where we need to go. Right. So, uh, this way. And, oh, it's going to be shut, isn't it? Gonna be shot. I like how everyone says hail daughter of Mira and she must hate it so much. Like that that would really annoy her. Okay, so uh wait until it is Oh I don't know. Twelve. That seems good. Right, we can now head inside and report. Now, remember in our report, we want to lie through our teeth. There is nothing there. There's no Luminous Adra. There's nothing. Let's see how that goes. I, can I go inside? Welcome back. Governor Alvari will see you. Nice. Quick save before we do it, but hello. Ah, good. You're back. I hope you had a pleasant voyage. Alavari looks up from her papers, giving you her full attention. A very strange voyage, sure. Ah. Before you get too far on the way, I think you ought to come with me. Director Castor will want to hear from you in person. Oh, okay. Upstairs we go. Get to speak to the person in charge. Oh, well. Okay. The man who rises to greet you has a tidy, scholarly bearing, only emphasized by the thin-framed lenses he pushes farther up his nose. He claps his hands together, offering you a smile equal parts polite and relieved. Albari tells me you are kind enough to look into this business on Pococahara for us. I hope you bring good news. Hmm. Well, I don't really want to say that we found the Adra Pillar, but okay, a lot of corpses for one viable Adra Pillar. I hope it's worth it. A terrible price, to be certain. But at least we have not lost everything. An Adra vein of that size will go some way towards setting us back on our feet. Assuming we can replace the people we lost. I notice Beza is not with you. Did you find any sign of the expedition? They died in the ruins at Pokakahara. The defenses were too much for them. A sorry end for such dedicated individuals. How very fortunate that you lived to tell their tale. I believe I can take things from here, Alvari. Agrasima. The Watcher and I have more business to discuss. Oh, and do pay the man for his trouble first. Alavari wordlessly hands you a copper purse. She bows stiffly, then turns to depart. 
That's not a lot, really, compared to how much we have. But okay, I'll take it. I apologize. Right to business with no real introduction, no? I am Ignato Castel, director of the Valian Trading Company's operations here in the Deadfire. I thought it best I speak with you face to face. Watchers are not so numerous here in the Deadfire, especially those of such storied backgrounds as yourself. They tell me you have uh, notable connections among certain of the families in Defiance Bay. The Dominels in particular. We may have talked once or twice. And I think that we are each of us in a position to offer each other something that we cannot find elsewhere. The Valian Trading Company has had a presence on this island for nearly a century now. We have the greatest fleet on the seas, the support of the richest men and women in the world. What can the Royal Deadfire Company offer? A soldier's wages, so that you can elevate the fortunes of a distant king? And the queen? A place in the Kahanga tribe among all the rest of these neglected people. You've lived outside the caste system all these years. Are you eager to return to it? I can give you money, fame, certainly. But the men and women of the company, we set our aims high. And if I only wanted to offer you work as an Adra inspector, I would have let Albari deal with you. So what is it you want? The Valian Trading Company has maintained an outpost here in Nekataka for nearly a century now. It was only two years ago that we discovered the effects of Luminous Adra with the aid of our Animancers and several watches. Flaune Alette has continued to study the potential of Luminous Adra in all manner of advances. Why content ourselves to sell all this Adra as a luxury when we might use it to change the world? But of course you understand all of this. Alette sent word of your involvement in her latest experiment. A very dramatic first attempt, I hear. Though uh, Alette has a tendency to gloss over details. But uh, I want to hear it from you. Well, we're How just, did it go? We're going to tell him the truth. My soul was sent to the, into the beyond, into one of Rimregrant's realms. You'll put the priest into a frenzy with talk like that. Communion with the gods is their business. Despite the levity in his voice, Castol regards you with a gloomy regret. A near-death experience does little to recommend Alette's efforts. I am glad you are in one piece, Watcher. We are in the early days of Alette's research. Flawed as this outing was, there is promise there. This is only the start, you know. The very dawn of a new age of discovery. But just imagine. Castol spreads his hands. His eyes behind his spectacles are fever bright with enthusiasm. Imagine if we could transport goods and people more quickly than any vessel or horse. Cure every kind of ailment. Perhaps cure disease altogether. We'll extend our lifespans by decades. Maybe even centuries one day. This has all been the work of a single outpost. I want there to be a dozen outposts. A hundred. Animancers working together to better our lives. Look at what we have left behind. Old Velia is a battlefield at constant war with itself. But the Republics have risen from that past. We can rise farther still. And in doing so, we will raise all of Aora with us. Belfeto! Palagina's outburst is restricted to a single word, but her gaze is riveted to the director. For a moment, you can even see blue flames of zeal flickering in the depths of her eyes. I gotta say, he's a good talker. Hmm. Let's just say lofty goals. Yes, but achievable, I think. I may not live to see it, but I will see the groundwork done. But uh, I've said enough. Too much, I think. There will be more experiments to come. Until then, I have a more grounded task I need assistance with. Nothing that should put your spirit in any danger. <laughs> Nekataka sees its share of smuggling. I doubt that would surprise anyone. But 
We've learned of a particular exchange that will have more dire effects than a few spoiled Hawana peasants. There are no peasants in the tribes. Your people created this term. Peace, man. They certainly aren't kings or queens, are they? There is a Royal Deadfire Company official by the name of Quarno, who has been meeting in secret with one of the Principi. I do not believe he works with the approval of his masters. He meets with a Captain Tola, a known pirate and smuggler. I hope I don't have to tell you that an alliance between a crooked royal official and the Principi is not the kind of trouble any of us need. I have a woman, Britza, waiting in the luminous bathhouse in Periki's Overlook. The smugglers do business there, and she has kept an eye on things. I promise to send assistance. Find her, and she will tell you what she knows. Why not just tell the Royal Deadfire Company? Telling you amounts to much the same, no? Someone has to put a stop to things. Good thing that someone is us. Rawatai and Black Powder is worth its weight in Audra out here. Okay, I have some questions first. Of course. Best to go in prepared. Why help the Royal Deadfire Company? The discipline of the Royal Officers isn't really what any of this is about. I'm more concerned about the pirates. In this particular case, the companies share an enemy. Okay, can you tell me any more about Rizzy? A fine, valiant woman. Steady temperament. Good sense. The bathhouse sees an enormous number of patrons every day. It is a useful place to have a set of eyes and ears on hand. Do you know anything else about these smugglers? Only that Tola is a captain of middling repute and some small ambition. I expect she feels that a partnership with Quarna will give her an edge. Britza will know more. Okay, I'll do it. Excellent. Meeting you has been a stroke of luck, Watcher. I'll await your report. Okay. He's a very reasonable person. So far. Although, I feel we had the same thing coming from the person in the Brass Citadel that we spoke to. Very reasonable. In fact, we're going to go and speak to them right now. I see no reason not to just go straight to them and speak to them. Although, we do need to also... Well, we need to hand in a quest for uh, Maya as well. Which I think is also with them. So it's all good. I was disappointed he didn't mention that we had Maya with us. Given that, you know... He works Captain, for the other you side. look most fetching in that color. Oh, thank you. Would you consider a longer stay in the dead fire? Island life suits you. <laughs> uh, he knows how to flatter. He knows how to flatter. Right. Head out there. Head over to the Brass Citadel. We want to head to Imperial Command. Just like, Imp yeah, just Imperial Command, not lower. We don't need to head to the lower bit of it. Although I think we do need to speak to the person at the lower bit of it. But anyway. You're traveling in the slums of Nekataka when the streets suddenly become barren. Alright. The high cliffs above uh, throw the narrow alleys and tunnels of Nekataka's ghettos into darkness, even in midday. The reek of rotten fruit mixes with the noisome scent of the dead fish, swaddling you along with, hundred, with a hundred other lesser fragrances. Your fruit steps echo in the darkness, piercing the otherwise silent slums. Do not walk loudly, Captain. Some of us are uneasy at the dead fish smell. The care who flinches at a passing shadow. You turn a corridor and walk into a plaintive cry. Help! Misshapen shadows mix with low hissing and skittering of claws and filthy stone to resolve into a pack of skulder. The glistening maws float on the b in the black. The cave grubs wriggle about their legs, mandibles snapping as if to mangle the air. On the far side of the creature is a small girl dressed in the rags of the Huana, grip a gleaming sword in both hands. He brandishes it wildly at the scalder, each swing of the blade releasing a howl that keeps the beasts at bay. They creep ever closer to her, however, and her eyes plead with your own. Please! Hmm. We can slow the monsters, use the girl as a distraction, or draw the beast's attention. Let's use an ability. We'll use... Oh, Martyr's Memories. I guess. Does that slow the monsters? I don't think it does, but we're going to cast it. 
Mia steps forward, chanting against the hisses and skulls of the Skulder. The magic splashes across the Skulder and they, gro they growl and thrash at the immaterial essence that hobbles them, clawing at the wisps of light that shouldn't pose any obstacle to a heavy muscled monster. The creatures turn towards you, hissing as they shuffle forward. Okay, that's not what that ability does, but sure. I'm for it. Skulder. A single Huana girl. Called Kuzi. Well, let's start with. Lightning. Rough. How's our uh, dagger doing? Our dagger needs some more damage on it. We could run forward with the dagger, which I think I will. Gonna run Eddie forward with a knockdown. Palagina forward. Cave Grub. And Maya is gonna shoot this cave grub. I'm gonna mark it first though. Try this. And then shoot it. That looks like it hurt. Nice, we're still alive. Oh. Lightning, are we in range? Oh. Kind of in range. Switch. I'll take it. And run straight forward, yeah, and in here. This is good. The stun is very, very successful. Oh. There's something you don't see every day. Nice. Some of them are immune, but they're still successful. Nice. We're still doing damage. Um, I think we want to heal with athletics here and then probably shoot this one. Let's do that. I am the alpha predator. Yes, you, you are indeed the alpha predator. Well done. And the Skulldrak. Some damage on it. We'll stick behind it and oh it's already dead. Koozie around? Oh Koozie's dead. We did not manage to save her. Be right that's there. Koozie over here. Yep, she dropped Griffin's Blade. One-handed sword. Um this bronze sword is not associated with a great smith, but uh, with a modest artisan. The young craftswoman, noted for her talent at engraving and jewelry, received the unfinished blade from her local lord with a commission for a brass cross guard and a pommel. Later this trust shown in our talents. The artisan worked tirelessly to complete the order. She etched and polished. Her faithful dog Griffin stayed at her side day and night. As the days turned to weeks, Arson began to forego food and sleep in her effort to fulfill the commission. When she became discouraged, Griffin, her ever faithful companion, was there to encourage her with a nuzzle and a loving lick. One day, while working, the artisan looked down at her feet to find her beloved canine companion, Cole and Still. Griffin had died, curled at her feet, faithful to the last. Heartbroken, the artisan decided to commemorate the hound on the piece into which she had poured her heart and soul. She crafted the pommel into Griffin's likeness, taking some comfort in knowing that when the Lord carried his sword, he too would always have a loyal companion at his side. That's loyal companion. It bolsters the party's courage. Oh. Cool. I mean, we are going to take it, but I kind of feel bad that she's dead. I, I tried our best, though. We used abilities and everything. There's nothing we could do. Anyway. Head out here. Right. Uh, I assume Koozie was probably the artisan. Maybe? I don't know. In which case, she let the dog yes, die. Or I, uh... Maya scratches the back of her head. This is where we part ways. For the moment. What's going on, Maya? Asura will want me to report in alone. Sorry, it's, it's company business. I might not be back for a few days on account of this. Maya chews the inside of her cheek and reaches into her pack. She produces a sealed missive. I'm supposed to handle this one alone. I won't ask you to come along or get involved. At first, it seems like she is looking down at Ashiza. In fact, Maya is looking down at her feet. Well, I'll go with you. Where are we bound? When I said I won't ask, what I mean is you aren't invited. This is a one woman, one bird kind of job. Your other bird friend can keep you company for a couple of days. She nods to Palagina. Without missing a beat, Palagina makes a rude hand gesture in Maya's direction. Go have fun. Chase a god, save an island. Do what you do best, Captain. He nods encouragingly. Well, try not to get yourself killed. Awfully sentimental of you to suggest it. I'll do my best. She nods to you, holding your gaze for an extra moment before she clicks her tongue to summon Ashiza. Captain, a word? Oh, she's gone. She's just gone. Okay. 
Interesting. Well, kind of hoping for a backup in this meeting, but hey, it is Hazanui I need to speak to, right? Uh, for the... this one? No, I need to speak to Azura. Oh no, I need to go downstairs. Hazanui must want to know about the other one. The other mission, which we haven't done yet. Right, downstairs. Let's see what's going on with Azura. That I have to handle it alone kind of sounds like it's good. she's going to kill someone, but... It's impossible to oh, cheat we'll at Hazatoa. Hello, Atsura. Clear skies. Yeah, I restored the Luminous Adder at Pokakahara. That explains the rumors the Valians are scaling up in Queen's birth. I'd hoped you would stop them. His expression doesn't change, but you feel his dissatisfaction like a shift in temperament. Um. Ooh. How do we... Hmm. Which way do we go? I don't work for you is definitely one we could go for. Not quite what I'm going for. Ah. Uh, I don't know how to uh, do this. I don't say, like, now I have the trust. Imagine what I could do with that, maybe? I don't know. I don't really want to... I don't want to play politics in this. Um... Truck. Nevertheless, I'm more interested in reports the storms around the islands have cleared. What do you know of this? He leans a little closer, his hands folded behind his back. There was a clot of essence corrupting the Adra. Clearing it ended the storms. Even if this isn't the outcome we'd wanted for Poco Kahara, your observation is infinitely more valuable. Take this, and remember it the next time we call on you. He hands you a purse, but his expression is distant, as if he's still thinking about what you told him. We'd long suspected something unnatural was behind the storms, but we had little evidence. The smile playing at his lips is that of a man who's seeing the next three moves in a game of, Haz of Hazatoa. Rarotai is plagued with terrible storms, you think there may be a connection? Yes. If the storms that assail Rawatai have a similarly unnatural origin, then perhaps they too can be stopped. He looks back up at you, his eyes bright with purpose. And if that's the case, then there's more work to be done. Work that you might be able to help with. Another silence passes as he regards you. After all, somebody has to keep the peace in these tumultuous times, no? Passionate or benevolent or diplomatic, I think we're all three. He smiles, showing you all of his pointed teeth. In any case, Hazanui Karu has a matter that could use your help. Her office is on the main floor behind the large double doors. It's most conspicuous. He frowns a little. Oh, he does. He acts like he's gonna do one thing, then he does something else. That's okay. Let's uh, speak to Hazanui, and then we may have to end the episode after that. We'll see. She's going to be unhappy, probably, at us, but we'll see. Azura tells me you tamed the storms of Poco Kohara. She scratches her chin with the stem of her pipe, watching you with new interest. Makes a person wonder what kind of secrets lie in Andra's mortar. She takes a thoughtful puff on her pipe. Why do you say that? She grins, smoke curling between her teeth. What kind of explorer are you? <laughs> Don't tell me you've never gazed at a horizon and wondered at what lies beyond. Or seen a no trespassing sign as a challenge. Occasionally, mischief tugs at her smile beyond her broad jaw. In that moment, she looks somehow younger. Nothing is more thrilling than the call of the unknown. That's the spirit. He claps you on the back, her wooden hand clopping against your shoulder. Rautai's storms have made us who we are as a nation. Hardy, driven, inventive. But they've also held us back. Forced our people to seek resources and livelihoods far from our homes and families. Imagine how much more we could achieve if we could control those storms. Her bright eyes watch you for a reaction. 
Hmm. You think something in Andra's mortar will help you with that? Why not? The storms there cannot be natural. Not when they are so ferocious, so constant. She motions to the window, a thin stream of smoke following her gesture. And your exploits at Poco Kahara suggest that something else may be behind them. But enough of that for now. He waves the smoke between y you away. Atsura said you needed my help. There is an understatement. He knocks the bowl of her pipe against her wooden hand. The trouble in Hasango forced us to send additional ships back to Rawatai to make up for shortfalls. <sighs> and storms at home have delayed another portion of our fleet. This leaves us short-handed here. She purses her lips with displeasure. Well, I've got an expert crew in a ship that can handle anything out there. I have no doubt. We're due to collect a special shipment for delivery to our port at Sayuka. We've contracted with a captain named Widla. A flicker of distaste passes across her face. Meet her, complete the trade, and take the cargo to Sayuka. Fleet Master Okaya is overseeing the development of some special projects there. She takes a thoughtful draw on her pipe as she looks at you, seemingly deciding what to say. She's one of the brightest minds in Rawatai, and it shows. You two will get along. Her amusement manifests in the barest lift of her eyebrows. Most of her work is, or should be, under wraps for now. But perhaps she can give you a taste of what we have to offer. Why don't you send Widler's crew to Sayuka? Her laugh sounds like a grunt. <laughs> Let's just say, I'm not keen to invite them to a port where we're developing experimental technologies. They're smugglers. Along with half the population of this storm-tossed archipelago. He shakes her head. I understand you're cozy with the Principi. I've got no love for pirates, but that connection may serve you well here. Whitler and her crew, who are they? Good sailors with a fast ship and no mind for questions. He chomps a little bit harder on the bit of her pipe. Along with yeah, I understand you're it. cozy with the Principi. I've got no love What's for pirates, but it'll be easier for Okaya to explain. He puffs a thick cloud of smoke between the two of you. It doesn't break your gaze, but the effect is almost the same. Well, if it's important, I can handle it. What's next? Widler's agreed to meet our courier out at sea, away from the heaviest traffic. She gestures on her map to the open water west of Nekataka. This is her payment. We've already negotiated with her. She hands you a purse. Fleet Master Okaya will see to your compensation once you arrive with the cargo. He watches you appraisingly. This is the kind of job that's best completed quickly and quietly. I'm counting on your famous discretion. Clear skies. All right. Cam seas. And with that and our slightly smaller party, I think it's time to end the episode. Thank you for watching. Things have started to heat up a lot. We got quests that aren't all interlinked. We're starting to go off into individual quest lines. This is where this kind of RPG really expands and shines is where you got the quest lines where they can develop one thing like yeah sure the ones where you have the Rawatians and the Valians and the, the Huana all want the same thing and you have to choose one of three options yeah that that's okay that's fine but I much prefer the ones where you're working for someone and then you have to make choices like without it just being a straightforward you know what the options are like you know what the result of your options are I like that a lot better. So, yeah, we'll see how uh, these couple of quests go. And who we bring along. I mean, just losing a companion, a companion just saying, yeah, I need to go. See you later. Okay, sure. That doesn't happen very often in this kind of thing. At least, not to my knowledge. It's pretty cool. Anyway, I'm going to end the episode here. Thank you for watching. See you next time. Goodbye.